if you want to hear about how Mordio, the Crypt Monster series we talked about last week on Things You Missed, could tie into Shelly, the Crypt Monster series I'm going to talk about today, then stick around to the end of this video. Today's video is made possible by our sponsor, Crypt TV. The first episode of Season 2 of Shelly has just come out, and as with all of Crypt's 2019 productions, it's part of a greater universe. There are little clues hidden throughout about how this all fits into the grand story that each of these series make up. But before we get into my theory about how Shelly Season 2 fits into this universe, let's take a quick look back at Season 1. Season 1 takes place 20 years after the 1998 graduation at Avon Manor High School, where an introverted floor hockey athlete hangs by the neck at the graduation ceremony. The story follows Nix, Lauren, and Heidi, three bullies who picked on Shelly and other girls back in the day. At the reunion, Heidi fires an insult at a girl named Celine by bringing up her old nickname, Blobby. Lauren excuses herself to go use the bathroom, where she has a flashback of them bullying Shelly, calling her Silent Shelly, and tightening the tie around her neck. <laughs> Uh, no, probably not. You're kind of blocking her windpipe thing. Lauren is attacked by a monster resembling Shelly. When Nix and Heidi go to look for her, after discovering an old photo of when Shelly was just a level 1 crook, they find Lauren's jaw has been removed, possibly intended as a literal silencing in response to their silent Shelly taunts. A tie is also tightened around her neck. They see this as a sign that someone knows their secret, but that secret has not yet been revealed. In this next scene, Heidi and Nix run into the locker room. Here's a little free tip for you. If the ghost of a student athlete is haunting you, don't go in the locker room. Literally go anywhere else. Nix gets picked off with a mean slap shot, leaving just Heidi remaining. Throughout the school, there are posters advertising a production of Macbeth. This is a fitting reference because Macbeth is a Shakespeare character who becomes riddled with guilt after committing murder. We soon find that this is the case with the bullies as well. That little necktie incident actually killed Shelly, or at least incapacitated her. So the girls make it look like a suicide, and almost get away with it if not for Celine, aka Blobby, catching them in the act. The pursuer reveals herself to be none other than Celine, and Heidi is chased into what appears to be that Macbeth production. She almost gets away, but there's a second killer, the real Shelly, who finally gets her revenge. Hand in hand, we see that Celine and Shelly have matching bracelets, and there's a little post credit scene hinting that in Season 2, Shelly is going to target the school's staff. That's where this theory takes off, with this symbol in the school administration's office. It appears to be a ripped out page of the book, The Crypt Tome, which is a manual for men to turn themselves into monsters that appears in several Crypt series. This symbol in particular is the emblem seen on The Door in the Woods, a Crypt Monster Universe short film about a colony sworn to protect the world from a monster known as the Brute. The Brute is basically a level 50 boss. The symbol is seen on the door and on the clothing of everyone in the colony. My theory is that the schools in Shelly are built on the ground upon which this colony once resided. That's right, I said schools, plural. It seems that Shelly's school, Avon Manor, is an all-girls school located next to the all-boys school. The headmaster of Avon Manor even says that there's multiple schools when she talks on the phone with Hargate, who's presumably in charge of the boys' school. Our schools are being disgraced. On top of that, in this shot of Hargate's office, there's a picture of the boys' school crest, which is different than the Avon Manor crest. The symbol of Avon Manor is a fox, but this school seems to have a stag, which, interestingly enough, is the animal head of Mordia. This is a pretty small detail, and it remains to be seen if there really will be any crossover, but it's definitely something to keep an eye on. But there's definitely a connection with the door in the woods, and I believe it has something to do with the bracelet that Shelly recovers from Celine, which is seen to have been originally given to her by this guy, who I would assume is Shelly's boyfriend from the boys' school. The bracelet is seen at the end of the episode giving life to this buried person. Maybe this is the reason that Brute and Shelly are seemingly invincible. This revival ritual, likely taken out of the crypt's home, could bring its subject back to life and give them new, monstrous powers. Shelly also has similar themes to the door in the woods, with adults trying to keep this ancient power hidden away from the kids and the rest of the world in both stories. Having people snooping around could ruin us. So it would appear that after all this time, the powers in charge of the colony are still trying to suppress the evil that lies within. Let me know what you think of this theory in the comments and any other thoughts you have on Shelly, The Door in the Woods, Mordio, and anything else that could be connected to the storyline. Of course, you'll want to stay tuned to this entire season of Shelly. Remember to subscribe to Crypt TV for new Crypt Monster Universe videos every Friday. Ring the death bell for notifications, and I'll see you in the next one. Assuming we both survive. Or get brought back.